Aloha, players. Warboss Tay here from Warboss Tay Productions, uh, warbosstaystudios.com. And today, as you can see, I finished building up my dwarf cannon. So let's take a quick look at the models. This is some mold lines I need to clean up on this barrel, but here is our big, muscly engineer. It's nice to see that um, the bodies have, the chainmail skirts have like a little bit of leather, leather padding on it now. We've got this bald dwarf head, which is different from the, uh, all the other ones and all the other plastic kits. He's holding a giant cannon shell and he's lugging around a keg of gunpowder. Oh wow, look at that. I must have done this um, really late last night and I just forgot to clean up all of that, but I'll, I'll get to that in the next bit. <clears throat> Here is my engineer's assistant and um, I'm, I'm calling him that because he's got this mask which uh, I think is super cool. I'll paint it up like all gold and silver and it's got like the little eyepiece but I was thinking of giving that to the engineer but then that wouldn't that would mean that nothing would really distinguish this guy because this guy's got the big muscly arms he's hold he's lugging around the keg of gunpowder the engineers the engineer and yeah so I wanted to give this other engineer's assistant something so maybe he had a horrible uh, misfire which totally messed up his face so now he wears this mask I think that's pretty cool and here's the third guy, if I want to use him as the engineer for the cannon, then he could also be that. He's holding up a clipboard, which I'm planning on painting like it's a uh, diagram of the battlefield. And he's waving his arms like, what's going on? Come on! Come on, what are you guys doing? Move it, move it! We gotta load this cannon, come on! Or, actually, since they talk with a Scottish accent, what are you doing? Move it, hurry up, load this cannon, we've got to shoot the buggers. And, um, as you can see, he's got a lot of tools on his belt so that's what I liked about this model is that GW modeled it to have like tweezers and pliers and all this other stuff little little baby hammer yeah so that'll be pretty cool to paint up lastly we've got the cannon here nothing too uh, difficult about building it you just have to take your time and make sure you dry fit everything before you super glue it or plastic glue it in this case um, but I decided not to glue the door because I think that um, I also didn't glue it facing a certain way so that if it's um, To show that if it's If it gets a misfire and I kind of shoot next turn then I'm gonna do that I'm gonna turn turn it so that the nozzle or the uh, muzzle is facing down and If it kind of shoot for this turn or the next turn, then I'm gonna pop open the back hatch like that so, if it cannot fire this turn, I just put it down. If it cannot fire this turn or next turn, I'll put the barrel down and pop open the back. And then at the end of the turn, shut that. And then at the end of the next turn, boop, bring it back into space like this so that uh, I'll know that the cannon is operational again. And if the cannon blows up, then I'll just take it off the field. So, that's my little plan for misfires. So, let's take a look at what else you get with the cannon frame because I obviously didn't use everything there's also the option to do an organ gun which means that you you get these four barrels for the organ gun and the uh, housing for the barrels some extra bits these little dragon things go on the backs of the barrels are kind of like the um, hammers for the for the back of the guns they sit right here kind of fiddly. I built one of these organ guns before and um, those things are really fiddly to build because the pieces are so small. And here's an optional ring piece to put on the front of your cannon or organ gun, kind of like for towing it. They hitch it up to a mule or a bear. God, I hope, I hope dwarves get bear cavalry. Oh, that would be so awesome. Um, I, don't, I don't even know what that is for. I don't remember seeing that in the instructions. Huh. I wonder. Okay, here's where the other sprue is where you get all the cool extra stuff. So if you're using an organ gun, you've got these uh, this little tray of organ gun bullets. You get a shield, which is so awesome with the cannon symbol on it for I guess the engineering guild, engineer's guild. 
You get an extra arm for holding a hammer that you can give to one of your crew. You also get a pickaxe and a shovel, which I assume is for if you decide to put a master engineer in your crew, then you can create an entrenched position for one of your cannons, which gives it some bonuses. But um, I guess that's for modeling that, which I, I think is pretty cool. You get an arm with the loader for the cannon, which I, I could have used on one on my muscly crew guy, but I thought it'd be be more awesome to have him holding the the cannon shell and the, the keg of gunpowder. Here you've got extra cannon shells. The detail on these is really nice. Very dwarven. And then you've got this periscope looking thing which is really awesome. Dwarf periscope. I mean, you could do a lot of cool conversions for terrain pieces with that, I think. It's really cool. Then you've got this bucket for... I guess for water, for holding water. I think that's what it is. Looks like it just sits on the ground like a little bucket. You've got a spare dwarven helmet. A cannon shell. Awesome. Uh, one of the crewmen could have this arm for operating the cannon, like they're uh, adjusting it, loading... Um, adjusting the, the angle of the barrel. And yeah, it looks like it looks like with all the cogs and the gears and everything that the dwarves are kind of moving slowly towards a more steampunk aesthetic. You can take a look at all the gears and and stuff. And that's kind of how I'm gonna plan on on painting it, not as straight gold and silvery, but I'm gonna try to see if I can do some brass and uh, copper looking things just to make it look kind of more like steampunk-ish. I think that's a pretty cool aesthetic, and um, I hope GW continues with that for their dwarves. Okay, so that didn't take too much time at all, so for, for day four, where we are in our painting challenge... Sorry about that, battery died. Um, so like I was saying, for day four, for our painting challenge, I'm going to, now that I've built up this cannon, I've got a little bit of extra time, so I'm going to see how much of these models I can base. And when I'm basing, I'm just going to be taking some white glue, all-purpose white glue, bonds fast, dries clear, and I'm going to cover their bases, and then I'm going to dip their bases in sand and gravel. And um, my, my, my idea for the dwarves, first I was thinking, ooh, I'll make them a snowy theme, give them snow on their bases and stuff, but then um, I've, I don't know, I think I've been doing too much snow with my, like, Dark Eldar and my Chaos stuff, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it like they are underground in their dwarf hold or in the tunnels under the, the earth, and I'm going to paint it up like they're in a cavern, and then, um, yeah, I think that, that'll be really fluffy. I could do lots of grays and no grass, and, um... I think depending on how I color them, uh, it'll it'll stand out really nicely. So, so that's my plan for these guys. I'm gonna see how much I can base, and then we'll see you when I get done. Whew. Okay, this three-hour time limit that I'm limiting myself to is just uh, whew, it's, it's a killer. I had to go over again. I went up to four hours again today. But I just wanted to finish all my bases because I still had a unit left and forgot how long it takes to base miniatures just to put the glue down, make sure the glue isn't on the legs or the feet or the hems of these chainmail skirts, and then dip it in sand and make sure that the sand doesn't get on the rims of the bases and that the, the models aren't... Um, you know, don't have their boots completely covered in sand and everything, and oh, it takes a while. And and this is the uh, still the assembly stage, although it is the last stage of the assembly. Um, yeah, it just it, it took me a lot longer than I thought it would. I thought I would have some time to go out and do some do some priming, but that's gonna have to wait till tomorrow. Here are my thunderers or hammerers. They're giant hammers. So I am gonna wait till tomorrow. But um, yeah, I'm glad I got them done. I feel real sense of accomplishment. And um, 
yeah, just one more time, I just want to encourage all of you out there, if you're interested in joining my painting challenge, let's get this flag out of the way. The banner's blocking all the awesome guys in back. Then feel free to join up with me. I'm only on day four. If you've got any models assembled already, I'm planning on starting the priming tomorrow and then starting my painting over the weekend. Why don't you jump in and join me and let's let's get the painting together. These first four days, like I said, we're just all about the assembling and converting and um, just getting them into the right formation, getting the right style and the right look before we get to the painting. But now that that's done, um, you know, the painting is going to be just a blast. So, so one more time if you want to join me and follow, follow in my steps, follow in the steps of Christopher from AG Productions, then um, I, I welcome you wholeheartedly and let's, let's get some painting. Alright, so we'll see you tomorrow where the goal will be to prime all of my models in dark gray. And the reason for dark gray is because It'll cover the sand on the bases nicely. It'll it'll hold them and hold the sand in place even better, and also it'll be uh, a good medium color to to bring the colors either up or down with lighter or darker. So see you tomorrow. I uh, hope you guys all have a great day and a great evening from wherever you are in the world. And um, yeah, take care. <laughs>